Welcome to today's 1920s Diamond Gem Set game between the visiting 1922 St. Louis Browns and the homestanding 1924 Washington Senators using Strat-O-Matic baseball. Both of these teams were loaded with star power. The 1924 Washington Senators were world champions. This promises to be one of those epic can't-miss games. So strap in and buckle up and enjoy the game between the Browns and Senators, presented by Sportsman Z. Hello, baseball and Stratomatic fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am going to be here with my first 1920s Diamond Gem matchup. And instead of using the Yankees, which probably everybody who got the Diamond Gem set for the 1920s would use one of the Yankee teams, I'm not doing that. I am going to do a matchup between the 1922 St. Louis Browns and the 1924 Washington Senators. The Senators, of course, will be the home team. And I say, of course, I don't know why, because I could have picked either one. But Washington will be the home team in this one. Uh, obviously, their park was Griffith Stadium. Now, I say obviously for that, because that's obviously the truth. They played at Griffith Stadium, and uh, they will be the host team against St. Louis. And the pitching matchup is also not going to be your typical matchup because I know if I talk about the 1924 Senators, people are like, oh yeah, yeah, you're going to pitch the big train, Walter Johnson. No, I am not going to do that. I'm going to pitch Furpo Marbury for Washington, and he will be opposed on the mound by Ray Culp for the 22 Browns. Now, I love this 22 Browns team. Ever since, um, you know, when when Strat issued the, um, you know, when they had those uh, those uh, basic side cards for the old-timer teams, St. Louis Browns of 1922 were one of those teams. And, man, they had some great players. George Sisler, Ken Williams. Um, okay, really, that's about it. But... <laughs> Uh, but, you know, and then, of course, the Senators were the world champions in 1924. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, the St. Louis Browns finished second in the American League. Uh, again, just the housekeeping here. We're going to have this is going to be the uh, innings, tracking the innings, so that you could always see where we are with the innings. And you've got the scores right up there. So when the teams score... You know, there you go. So, and these are two pretty powerful lineups, so there might be a lot of scoring. Um, with all of that out of the way, I think we're ready to go. The lineup, I'll do the lineups as the teams come up, and the first team batting is going to be the St. Louis Browns. And they will line up as Jack Tobin in right field, the leadoff batter, followed by Wally Gerber, shortstop. Then George Sisler at first base. Ken Williams is the cleanup hitter in left field. Baby Doll Jacobson in center field. Batting sixth will be um, Marty McManus at second base. Batting seventh is H Hank Severide, the catcher. Frank Ellerby will be batting eighth and playing third base. And Ray Culp will be the ninth batter and doing the pitching today. So Jack Tobin is going to step in against Furpo Marbury to lead this thing off. And he gets a 3-6 against a righty, and that is going to be a double. So all of a sudden, they're off to a good start. Marbury allowing the, the uh, first batter to reach base with a double. Marbury giving up the hit, and... The next batter is, and that, and he's not even their best hitter. I mean, their best hitters are coming up. Wally Gerber is the next batter. He gets a 2-8 against a righty. That is going to be a ground ball shortstop A, so that's one away. So he goes out 6-3, and George Sisler is the hitter. George Sisler, a very good hitter. He hit over 400. In fact, he hit 420, I think. Yeah, he hit 420. So... Got his work cut out for him here. One six, and that is going to be a double. It's just a plain out double and knocks in Tobin. And all of a sudden, the Browns are on the board. And uh, Marbury gives up his second hit and first run of the game. That brings up Ken Williams. Of course, he was a really good batter, too. 
and he gets a 6-6 six, six batting. Um, uh, he's a left-handed batter, and that's going to be a fly out to center, so that's two away. And that brings up the Baby Doll, Baby Doll Jacobson. I don't know why he had that nickname. If anybody knows, leave it in the comments. 1-9 is going to be a ground ball second base, so he goes out 4-3. And the uh, Browns do get a run, so we will put their run on the board. Put it on the board, as uh, the Hawk would say. And we'll take their token off a second. And um, here's going to be the lineup for the Washington Senators. You're going to have Earl McNeely leading off and playing center field, followed by Bucky Harris, the second baseman and manager of the team. Sam Rice will be the third hitter and playing right field. Goose Goslin is in left field, batting in the cleanup spot. Batting fifth is Joe Judge. Here comes the judge, first base. Batting in the sixth spot will be Ozzie Blue Edge, and he's going to play third base. Muddy Rule is the catcher in batting seventh, followed by Roger Peckinpah batting eighth in the shortstop. And then you've got um, Firpo Marbury, of course, the pitcher, batting ninth. And so we will lead off. The uh, first batter is Earl McNeely batting against Culp. And he gets a 5-8 batting um, right, and that's going to be a fly to right. So McNeely flies out for the first out. Next batter is Bucky Harris. He gets a 3-5, and that is going to be a single. So Bucky Harris gets aboard with a hit. That is the first hit allowed by Ray Culp. Sam Rice is the batter. Two righties on the mound today here. 4-8. And that is going to be a pop-out to... Or wait a minute. It's going to be a strikeout. So, um, no, no, no. He's, he is a left-handed batter. So that is a pop-out to second. Pop-out to second base. That's two down real quick with a man at first and Goose Goslin, the batter. The cleanup man. And he gets a 5-12, and that is going to be a ground ball to the first baseman. The first baseman for the Browns is um, uh, Sisler, the aforementioned Sisler, and he got he's a 1-E-19. And that is a 17. I'm going to guess that is clearly going to be an out. And uh, let's see. That is indeed an out. So he goes out three, ground out three, and no runs come, come across for them. We go to the top of the second with the Browns leading one nothing here and uh, starting their second inning against Marbury with Marty McManus, the batter. And he gets a 4-12 batting right, and that's going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. He happens to be a 4-E-14. That is a 6 don't like that. Don't like the looks of that. That's going to be on the E rating, so we'll roll for the E rating. And it's a 5 on an E14. 5 is going to be an E1, so he makes an error. So that was, uh, and was that the first batter? Let's see. Yeah, that was. McManus is on by an, an E1 and right off the bat. And that brings up Hank Severide, the catcher. And he gets a 1-6, which is going to be a single double asterisk and put runners at the corners. A hit allowed by Marbury. That's the third hit he's allowed. Frank Ellerby is the batter. He gets a 4-7 batting right. That is going to be a strikeout. So there's one out. First strikeout there for Marbury this game. And that brings up Ray Culp. He is the batter. 
it'll just let him hit. <clears throat> it's a 610, and he is a right-handed batter. And that's going to be a ground ball, first base B, which is going to score the runner from third on a fielder's choice. And uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, St. Louis takes a 2 nothing lead and up steps the top of the order, Jack Tobin. And he gets a 2-6, which is going to be a line out to first base. Line out three, but St. Louis strikes again. And they get their second run of the game, and they have a 2-0 lead on the world champion Washington Senators. And uh, they will be bringing to the plate, and I have to catch up with this. This is the bottom of the second. Apologize for that. Goose Goslin, or no, wait, Joe Judge. Joe Judge is up. And he gets a 5-7 batting left, and that's going to be a single. So the Judge gets a hit. That is the second hit allowed by Tobin. And Ozzy, or Culp, and Ozzy Bluge is up. And he gets a 6-6 six, six batting right. And that's going to be a fly ball center. So there's one away. And Muddy Rule is up. Muddy Rule gets a 5-6 batting right. And that is going to be a ground ball third base B. So that's a fielder's choice with the uh, batter being at first base now. And Roger Peckinpah, the shortstop, is the batter. And he gets a 1-4, and that's going to be a walk. Two runners on, and unfortunately that brings up Furpo Marbury, and they're not going to take Marbury out of the game just yet because, uh, I mean, we're really early in the game, and these are two really good teams, so 2 nothing isn't that big of a deal. They're going to let them hit. And that is a 2-7, which will be a strikeout. So Colt with the strikeout, his first of the game, and still no runs for the uh, for the Senators. We go to the top of the third, where we are going to see Wally Gerber, the baby food man, and he is going to get a six-seven batting right. Um, and that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman, X. And uh, the second baseman is a 2E28. That is a 9. So let's see what that gets him. That is going to be on the uh, air rating, and it's a 28, so that's not good. 10 and an E28 is going to be a ground ball A. So the second baseman does make the play. So Gerber is out. He goes out 4-3 to lead off the third inning. One down quickly. And George Sisler up. George Sisler with a 4-10 batting left. And that is going to be a fly ball left field. There's two away, and the batter is Ken Williams. And he gets a 5-4 batting left, and that is going to be a catcher card. The catcher for the Senators is a 1-E-4. That is a 5. And that is going to be a wild pitch followed by pop-out, so no runs come across. And that's the first zero inning. Um, for St. Louis as we go to the bottom of the third with uh, Washington still trailing St. Louis 2-0 here, as you can see. And Earl McNeely is the batter. He is the, we're back at the top of the order for Washington. 
And that is a 3.7, which will be a single. So Earl McNeely gets on with a hit. That is the third hit allowed by Colt. Bucky Harris is up. Bucky Harris getting a 4-6 batting right. And that is going to be a ground ball shortstop double play. So Bucky Harris hits into a 6-4-3 double play. And there are two down quickly now. And Sam Rice is about to. Sam Rice gets a 3-5, and that's going to be a fly uh, pop out. What is that? A ground ball. Ground ball to first base. So no runs come in for the Senators. They still have no runs here against Ray Culp, and we go to the top of the fourth where Marbury is still out there pitching, but he's losing 2 nothing right now with Ken Williams, the, no, Goose, wait, who is it? Baby Doll Jacobson is the batter. And he gets a 5-7 batting right, and that's going to be a fly to center. One away, and Marty McManus is the batter. And he gets a 5-7 batting right. That's going to be a fly to center. We know that. And Hank Severide, the catcher, is up with two down and nobody on. And he gets a 1-8, which is going to be a... That is going to be a double. So, Severide hits a double. And... Um, Marbury's giving up all kinds of hits here. That's the fourth hit allowed for him here in the fourth inning. And Ellerby is the batter. Ellerby gets a 6-5 batting right. And uh, that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. Their shortstop is a 1-E-30. That is a 3. So 3-1 three and one at shortstop might be an out. And it is. So he's out, and uh, they don't get any runs. St. Louis gets no runs in the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning in a 2 nothing game here. St. Louis with a 2 nothing lead, and uh, Goose Goslin is the batter against Kolb. And that is going to be a 4-2 batting left, and that's going to be a ground ball first base. Which brings up Joe Judge. Here comes the Judge. He gets a 3-7. That's going to be a ground ball to second. 4-3. And that brings up Ozzie Blue Edge. And he gets a 4-4 four, four batting right. And that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop for St. Louis is a 2-E-48. So they got to hope he gets this on that, and I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, 12, no. So it's on the 48, which means probably an error. That is a 4, and uh, that is going to be an error, yes. One base error by the shortstop, which um, puts Blue Edge aboard on an, with an E6. And Muddy Rule is the batter. And that is going to be a 6-5 batting right. And um, that's going to be a strikeout. And that's only the second strikeout for Colt, but he doesn't care. He's got a 2-0 lead as we go to the top of the fifth inning. And uh, speaking of Colt, he is the batter here against Marbury. And that is a 411. 411 for a right handed batter against Marbury is a strikeout. Marbury striking out his second guy. Of course, back then, people didn't strike out as much. They took pride in putting the ball in play, uh, unlike today. And also, we will take that runner off of the base. Uh, let's see here. Jack Tobin back to the top of the order. 
and he gets a 6-8 batting left, and that is going to be a single. So we do put the token back, but we put it at first base. As Jack Tobin works his way aboard with a hit against Marbury. And Wally Gerber is up. And he gets a 2-3, which is a ground ball third base B. So he is now at first base on a fielder's choice. And there's two down. And George Sisler is up. And he gets a 4-10 batting left. And that's going to be a fly ball to the left fielder. So Sisler has, uh, I don't want to say he's been shut down pretty well. He's one for three with a double. That's actually not too bad, but not reflective of a 420 hitter. We go to the bottom of the fifth, and the Roger Peckinpah, the shortstop, will be the first batter to face Tobin here. And he gets a 5-8 batting right or to face Colt. Why do I keep saying Tobin? But anyway, um, it is a 5-8 batting right, and that is going to be a fly ball to right. And Marbury is the batter. They're not going to pinch hit for him. They're not taking him out just yet. It's still only 2-0. That is a 4-9, 4-9 for a right-handed batter against Colt, and that's going to be a single. So he does get himself a, a base hit and try to help, trying to help his cause here. Culp giving up his fourth hit. And uh, Earl McNeely, the batter, with one down. Back to the top of the order. That's a 5-12 for a right-handed batter. And that's going to be a ground ball to the first baseman. The first baseman is Sisler. He's a 1E19. That is a 14. And it's going to be on the uh, E ring. And uh, an E19 on 4 is... Um, that's going to be an E1. So Sisler makes an error. And they have two guys on. E3, George Sisler with what might be a key error there. Two runners around with one out, and Bucky Harris is the batter. And he gets a 6-7 batting right. And that's going to be a ground ball second base X. Their second baseman is a 1-E32. That is a 12. Again, he would like to have this resolved. No, he doesn't get it resolved on the range, so it's going to go to the E rating. That's an 11 on a 32. I don't like that. I don't like the looks of that. And that is going to be an E1. And so with two errors here in this inning, they have um, the, um, the uh, Senators have... Um, two or have the uh, bases loaded. Bases are loaded, one out, and Sam Rice is the hitter. And he gets a 5-6 batting left, and that's going to be a ground ball first base B. That is a fielder's choice that allows a run to score. Um... And that is Furpo Marbury coming in and scoring the run. So it is going to be 2-1 to one at least. And that's pending what Goose Goslin can do right here. And he gets a 4-6 batting left. And that is going to be a... That is going to be a uh, line out to the second baseman. So they, they do get... Washington does manage to get a run, so we'll give them that. We'll give them that. But they are still losing 2-1. to one.
And we go to the top of the sixth inning. Moving right along in this game. Pitcher's duel here. And Ken Williams is the batter to lead off the sixth for St. Louis. He gets a 6-3 batting left. And that's going to be a fly ball to the left fielder. The left fielder is a 4. That is their worst fielding guy. He is a 4-E-16. That is a 7. And that's going to be a single double asterisk. So Ken Williams leads off with a base hit. Sixth hit allowed by Marbury. And um, Baby Doll Jacobs. He gets a 3-3. That's going to be a ground ball first base C. So that is going to move the runner over to second. And Marty McManus is the new batter with one down and a man up at second. And that is going to be a 1-3. It's a hit by pitch. So St. Louis has two guys on here. They have a little bit of a threat going. And um, and Hank Severide, the catcher, is the batter with one out and two on. He gets a 4-7 batting right, and that's going to be a strikeout. Marbury striking out the third guy of the game for him, and Frank Ellerby is the and he gets a 210, which is going to be a ground ball third base. He goes out 5 3. No runs come in. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. In a 2 to 1, very tight game. As Red Barber would say, this game is closer than, uh, or is, this game is tighter than a new pair of shoes on a rainy day. And uh, Joe Judge is going to be the batter to lead off for Washington here in the sixth against Ray Cole. That is going to be a 6-10 batting left, and that is going to be a fly ball to center. The center fielder is a 1-E-15. That is probably going to be an out, and it is. So Joe Judge flies out to the center fielder and blue edge blue edge is the batter the third the first the wait the third baseman and he gets a 2-5 which is a single double asterisk or just a single for you and I that is a single and uh Culp giving up his fifth hit muddy Ruel is the batter he gets a 4-2 batting right and that is going to be a that is going to be a walk. So the first uh, or two two of the first three guys get on. There's only one out. That is a second walk issued also by Culp and Peckinpah is a batter, and he gets a two six, which is going to be a pop out to the shortstop. Now, they're going to let Marbury hit. This is back in the day. Pitchers pitched complete games, and this is only 2-1. to one. So they're going to let Marbury hit. Batting right, that's a 3-5. That is going to be a ground ball, shortstop, double play. But not really a double play. It's just going to be a ground ball out. And uh, Washington gets no runs there as we go to the seventh inning. The seventh inning, and it's 2-1. to one, And Culp is leading off. And of course, as I just said about Marbury, they're going to let him. They're going to let him uh, bat. I mean, his inning of weakness is nine. So you know, that is going to be a two ten, and that is going to be a ground ball second base. So Colp goes out four to three to lead off the seventh for St. Louis, which brings up Jack Tobin. Uh, he gets a 2-7. That is going to be a walk. So Jack Tobin's aboard. Jack Tobin having a pretty good day himself. He is 2 for 3 with a walk. And Wally Gerber is up. One out, one on. 
and he gets a 3-7. That's going to be a single double asterisk, and now they've got a real problem, the uh, Senators do. We're going to play the infield back, though, and play for the double play here with George Sisler up. Actually, you should walk George Sisler, shouldn't you? Well, Ken Williams is next, and he's great. So, <clears throat> they're not going to do that, and it's a 2-5, and it turns out that it's a ground ball shortstop B. <clears throat> infield was back, so the run does score. But it's... Uh, It's only one run. So it's still, the Senators are still within two runs. And Ken Williams is the batter. And he gets a 4-4 four, four batting left. And that's going to be a fly to center. The center fielder is a 2-E-8. That is going to be a 1. So I don't know about that. And that is going to be a double with two asterisks, meaning he has to stop it at third. So, another hit allowed. That's the ninth hit allowed by Marbury. He's bending but not breaking yet. And that brings up Baby Doll Jacobson. And he gets a 2 7, which is going to be a strikeout. And uh, the fourth strikeout for Marbury. Uh, the, um, uh, let's see, do they have anybody up here? Yeah, they do. The, the Browns <coughs> get another run. So they have a three to one lead here in this game. And Earl McNeely is the batter. Bottom of the seventh. Bottom, top of the lineup, though. And that's going to be a 1-7, and that's going to be a fly ball to left. Which brings up Bucky Harris. Not only the team's second baseman, but also their manager. And he gets a 1-9. That's going to be a ground ball to second base. And uh, up steps Sam Rice. Sam Rice gets a 5-3 batting left. And that's going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. Now he is a 5-E-8. That is a 6. So it'll be interesting to see. No, it's going to be on an E-8, which is actually for him, that's better. 7 and an E-8 is going to be a ground ball. So he goes out 1-3. Rice does, and Washington gets no runs in seventh. We go to the top of the eighth inning. And Marty McManus is going to be the batter for the, uh, for the Browns here in the top of the eighth. He gets a 3-7, and that's going to be a fly ball center. Hank Severide is up. Hank Severide gets a 4-4. Batting right. That is going to be a fly to center. Center fielder is a 2-E-8. That is a 9. That will be on the air rating. i to check the air rating. 5 on an E-9. And that is going to be an E to two base error. So the Browns have Severide up at second on an E8. Washington making some key errors here. And uh, that, that brings to the plate Frank Ellerby. They are going to walk Ellerby. <coughs> Yeah, they're going to walk Ellerby to fill in the base. And um, and that's going to bring up the pitcher, who is Ray Culp. 
and they're going to force the uh, Browns to make a decision. But their decision with a two-run lead and Cole pitching like he is is that they're going to let him hit. And he gets a 2-12, which is a strikeout. Marbury striking out his fifth guy. And we go to the top of the lineup with Jack Tobin. Jack Tobin gets a 3-6, which is a double 1-14, to and it is. It is a double. So um, they had, uh, I had the wrong color token on. But anyway, they're just going to stop the runner, and it's going to be one run knocked in on that. And that is Severide that scores on that. And Wally Gerber is the batter. Two down, though. And that is 5-8 against the righty. And that is going to be a single-level asterisk to knock in um, two more runs. And the, the Browns have really opened this up now. And Sisler is the bat. And Sisler gets a 310, which is going to be a, sub, a single double asterisk and put runners at the corners. And they, they probably left Marbury out there a little bit too long. They hung him out to dry. Ken Williams is the batter, and he gets a 3-9, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop, and he will be out. 6-3, <clears throat> and that is the, is that the third out? Yes, that is the third out. So uh, they get one, two, three more runs, which by my count, as bad as I was at math in school, by my count, that means that the Browns have a 6-1 to one lead here. As we go to the bottom of the 8th, and Goose Goslin is the batter against Jack uh, um, Ray Culp. I always want to say it's Jack Tobin. <laughs> I wonder if Jack Tobin ever pitched in his life. But anyway, Goose Goslin is the batter against Culp. And he gets a 1-9, which is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. Joe Judge is the hitter. And he gets a 5-8. And batting left, and that's going to be a fly to right. And Ozzie Blue Edge is the batter. And he gets a 6-4 batting right. 6-4, and that's going to be a catcher card X. The catcher is a 2-E8. That's Severide. So 11 and a... It's probably going to be on the air rating. No, no, it isn't. Um, let's see. Nope, that's going to be a pop-out. Pop out two, no runs come in for the Browns, and uh, now we're going to the bottom of the eighth, or no, now we're going to the top of the ninth, that was the bot. that would, no, that was, all right, wait a minute, that was a, that should have been the top of the ninth, right? Let's see. Pop out two, I've got that being for them, I got that for the, um, for the Senators in the bottom of the eighth. So now we're going to the top of the ninth with uh, St. Louis batting and leading 6-1, and they will take out Furpo Marbury. So Furpo Marbury goes um, eight innings. And uh, you got to believe he's going to get the loss here, but we'll see. We'll see. And I want to bring in somebody that would clearly be a reliever if I can, and that's going to be by, by Spies is going to come in. He had a 265 earned run average in 54 innings pitched, and we will put him in. 
he'll try to face this powerful, uh, as it has shown itself to be, St. Louis lineup. Baby Doll Jacobson is the batter here in the ninth. And he gets a 6 7 batting right. And that is going to be a ground ball second base. So wait a minute. Third base. Ground ball third base. He goes out 5 3. Bringing up Marty McManus. He gets a 1 8. That is going to be a single. So they've got hits galore here, St. Louis does. They have really hit up this Washington pitching. And Hank Severide is the batter. He is the catcher. He gets a 2-6. That is going to be a single double asterisk. Spies gives up his second hit on only his third batter. With one out, or wait a minute, with uh, yeah, with one out, and Frank Ellerby is the batter. He gets a 5 4 batting right. That is going to be a ground ball third base. The third baseman is a 1 E29, and that is a 16. 16 and 1 at third is hopefully a double play, and they'll be out of this. And it is. So that is a 5 4. For three double play and no more runs come in luckily for Washington for the uh, St. Louis Browns but we are in the um, we're in the bottom of the ninth though and Washington is down by five Cope is pitching like a champ and Ozzy Blue Edge will be the batter no Muddy Rule Muddy Rule will be the batter Try to face him and get on. That is a 2-3, and that's going to be a ground ball third. So he goes out 5-3. to three. Roger Peckinpah is the batter. He gets a 5-9 batting right, and that is going to be a pop out to the shortstop. And now you've got the pitcher spot up, and obviously they're going to pinch hit for the pitcher. And the pinch hitter is going to be Nemo Liebold. Yes. So Liebold will be the pinch hitter. And he gets a 4-4 batting left. And that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is a 1E32, and that is a 2. So let's see. 2 and 1, that is a ground ball A, and that is it. 6 to 3, and uh, that is your final score with the St. Louis Browns of 1922 defeating the 1924 Washington Senators by the score of 6 to 1. The winning pitcher is Ray Colt. The losing pitcher is Furpo Marbury. And that will be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.